solving exponential equations, in the last video we learned that if we could set up our equations where the bases match, then we could basically ignore the bases and just set our exponents equal to each other. We did two different examples of this. The first one is very easy to set up in that format. The second one took a little bit of manipulation, but we could do that the same way. Now what, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to check these by using a graphing utility. So I'm going to use my Desmos app for this one, but in a later video I'll show you how to use your graphing calculator. So I'm going to do example one, four to the two x minus three is equal to 60. And so the way that you do this is you type the left-hand side of your equation into one y equals, and you type the right-hand side of your equation into the other y equals. So my left hand is four to the two x minus three, and you can see that's graphed by the red line here. The right-hand side was just 64, so you can see that's a constant, so that's graphed in this purple line right here. If you want to check and make sure where these match, all you need to do is you need to figure out their point of intersection. And so with the Desmos website, all you need to do is you need to click to see where they intersect. And so in this case, we see that they intersect where the x value is 3 and the y value is 64. And so if we were trying to solve for x, then our solution would be x equals 3. And that is, of course, the solution that we came up with was that x equals 3. If you want to figure out where the y value of 64 comes into play, what it basically is is if you were to substitute this 3 back into the equation, you should end up with 64 equals 64. And that's exactly what we did. When I substituted it back in, we got the left-hand side was equal to 64, which of course matched the right-hand side. So that's how you check basically any equation. You put the left-hand side into one y equals, you put the right-hand side to the second y equals, and you figure out their point of intersection. Okay, let me give you another example here. And this one is five to the x is equal to 38. Well, if we wanted to solve this one by using the equivalence property, we would need to set both bases equal to the same number. And so we could try and manipulate this 38 over here to see, can I rewrite it as a base of 5? Now, not with a number that I know automatically. I know 5 to the first is equal to 5. 5 squared is equal to 25. 5 to the third is equal to 125. And you can see that I skip right over 38. So I will not be able to use my equivalence property because I cannot rewrite these in the same basis. But what you can do is you can use the opposite of exponential functions. And we know that the opposite of exponential functions is log. So what I can do then is I can take this from my exponential format and I can convert it into my log format where I have log base b of x is equal to y. So if I convert this into my logarithmic format, that would be log base 5 of 38 is equal to x. And so now I have my x isolated, and so now all I have to do is figure out what log base 5 of 38 is. So I just need to type that in my calculator, but we know the calculator only does base 10 or base e, so I need to do a change of base formula. So I can convert this as log of 38 over log of 5. Or if you like natural logs better, natural log of 38 over natural log of 5. And so if we want to figure out what the exact answer is, either one of these would be acceptable. And so if I wanted to figure out what my answer was approximately, I would just need to type this in my calculator. So I have my calculator here, and I can just type in log of 38 divided by log of 5. Or the same thing with natural logs. You're going to get the same answer. And so we get approximately 2.26. And pay attention to the instructions asking you whatever to round it to. So two decimal places, three decimal places, so on and so forth. So this is the approximate answer. 
However, if it doesn't specify approximate, it will most likely want the exact answer. And our exact answer is this right here. So pay attention to what the instructions are asking. Now, if I wanted to double check this by graphing it the exact same way that I graphed the previous problem, I'm going to do what I said. I'm going to plug my left-hand side of the equation, y equals 5x, into the first one, and the right-hand side of my equation of 38 into the second one. Now, if you just do this straight away, you're most likely going to have to adjust your window. Notice my x window is the same from negative 10 to 10, but notice my y window goes all the way up to something above 38. And I knew that because I knew I'd have this constant line here of 38. So if I want to confirm that I have my correct answer, I just click for my point of intersection. And so we can see that my x value here is 2.26, and that's what we got for our approximate x value. And so if you want to be able to solve exponential equations, and you cannot use the equivalence property where the bases are equal to each other. The way that you do that is you convert it into logarithmic notation by using that formula that we've seen so many times before. Now that's one way to think about it. Let me talk about the other way to think about it. And basically they're doing the exact same thing. So whatever works for your thought process. If I have this equation here, again, 5 to the x power is equal to 38. Now, I can think about converting it by using the conversion formula, or another way that I can do this is I can take log of both sides. So this would give me log of 5x is equivalent to log of 38. Or I could take natural log of both sides. That works too. Natural log of 5x equals natural log of 38. Now I can use my power formula and I can take my power and I can move it to the front. And so that would give me x log of 5, which is equivalent to log of 38. If I wanted to isolate my x variable, since it's multiplied, I would just divide by it, log of 5. And so that gives me the solution that x is equal to log of 38 divided by log of 5. And so, of course, we see that we get the same solution that we got over here. So you can either convert it using the conversion formula, or you can apply log to both sides, and you can apply the properties of log. In this one, we use the power property where we moved our exponent down in front. And you can see that we have the exact same answer.